Scientists have developed a new machine learning technique and trained it to predict and diagnose diseases such as lung cancer, tuberculosis, cardiovascular diseases and even malaria. They're collaborating with Charlotte Matreke Academic Hospital on the diagnosis of breast cancer. To tell us more, I'm joined by UJ Vice Councillor Chilitsi Marwala to explain to us. Uh, yes, Prof, I suppose this is uh, quite, a, quite a thing. Tell us, what is this application? How does it work? So, so basically what happened, we are using uh, the part of uh, the fourth industrial revolution mm. called artificial intelligence. Mm. Artificial intelligence is basically um, a computer software that is almost as intelligent as human beings. And in many cases, it can even be more intelligent than a human being. Like, for example, in an, e in, in an application on breast cancer, mm. normally what you do, you measure the conductivity of the breast and you take that data into an artificial intelligence software. And the software will be able to make the prediction as to whether the, uh, the person whom the sample was taken from is actually at risk, how much is the risk, and what needs to be done. Okay, so this is sort of, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this, because if we say we have blood tests already and we have certain tests that can tell you whether you have a form of cancer, whether you have TB, why would you need the machine? No, because uh, normally or when you the happens, app. Yeah, yeah. Uh, normally what happens, uh, let's, suppose, let's take a very uh, yeah. easy uh, uh, issue, which is uh, reading a mammogram. Yes. Uh, the picture of a mammogram. A doctor will have to come and look at the picture and make a diagnosis. And as you know, a doctor is a human being. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. The doctor will make mistakes. Uh, depends on many other factors. If he has seen hundreds of these cases and is tired, uh, he becomes, uh, uh, you know, he makes mistakes. So what we, we do is to create a machine that is able to learn all those patterns that a doctor will normally take. Now, doctors can't be happy about this. Does this mean that they can easily be replaced by something like this? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, over the weekend, I was speaking at, uh, at a conference of radiologists. And, of course, a radiologist are the type of doctors that look at medical images and make diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And studies have shown time and time again that uh, a machine, an artificial intelligent machine, is able to do that task better than... Um, radiologists. Mm. Now what does it actually mean? It means going forward the radiologists will have to make diagnosis not by themselves but together with a machine. It means that their job is going to change. Uh, they need to understand technology. They need to understand how to use technology and of course uh, um, their contribution is going to be different from their contribution now where they look at images and make a, a diagnosis. So it, it's almost like a backup. It's almost like having your first and second opinion in the same place. Is that what we... And, and, and almost foolproof so that if the human being makes a mistake, the machine can pick it up. No, it, it just Would, turns that, out that certain yeah. things are done better than uh, uh, by machine. machine. Mm. So because machine is actually looking at the numbers, uh, precise numbers. Whereas when you use your human eye to look at a medical image, of course that is not, that is not precise. Mm. You, know, uh, uh, you, are, you are using uh, what we call heuristic rules in order to make uh, uh, a decision. And that can make uh, people make uh, mistakes. Uh, one of the things that we don't talk about is how many people actually die yeah. as a result of misdiagnosis. And this sort of applications where we are replacing human beings with machines um, has proven very successful. We know very well that um, self-driving cars are actually doing that task better than a human being. Uh, we know that in aeroplanes now, if you actually go to the cockpit, you realize that much of the flying of the aeroplane is done by artificial intelligent machines. Uh, what the pilots do, they watch until something uh, goes wrong and then they intervene. So do you think you will be able, are you confident that we will be able to save more lives with inventions Absolutely, like absolutely. I think uh, the fact that artificial intelligence is doing much of the work that used to be done by doctors is actually a reality. Mm. It is a reality and much of the applications that uh, machines that are being bought today, they already have functionality of uh, artificial intelligence so that they are able to 
make diagnosis. They are more accurate than human beings. What about that uh, human touch, though, Prof? What about that bedside manner? I mean, you're getting bad news. You're getting it from him. Who's going to ultimately give you that Absolutely. bad news? Absolutely. That is why yeah. it will have to be a human okay. being and a machine. Because okay. you're right. If I am sick and... Um, you know, uh, and uh, a machine has, uh, has, has diagnosed that I'm sick, I probably will prefer a human being to come to me and say, hey, you know, you are sick. Yeah. Because a human being has other attributes, yeah. empathy, that a machine does not have, you know. So it is a human machine system. So no fears that we're going to lose jobs because of this. It's just going to be... No, no of, course, uh, of course, there will, there will be jobs that are going to change. There are already jobs that are actually uh, being replaced because uh, an artificial intelligence machine is able to do uh, these tasks. You know, call centers, we used to think call centers require human beings. Now you have chat boxes that are able to answer your questions much more consistently than a human being will be able to do. So you will have some jobs are going to change, some jobs are going to disappear, and new jobs are actually going to emerge because these machines have to be designed by a human being. They need to be maintained by a okay. human being. So those are the new jobs that I... So let's talk about what you're doing at the hospital at the moment. How is it... Uh, what are the plans for this? Well, the plans, obviously, we have the algorithms. We are collecting the data and we are going to test the algorithm and we are confident that we are going to, to observe something that is going to be useful not only for, 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 for us here in South Africa but globally. Mm. Okay, but I'd love to see it in action. Absolutely. Yeah. And one, one advantage of using machines, uh, you know, where I come from, which is in Limpopo, there's a hospital incidentally named Chirizini Hospital. Uh -huh. At this hospital, there are limited number of doctors. Now, if you have a machine that is able to do some of the work that is done by doctors, then you can elevate some of the tasks of nurses because now they're working alongside an expert machine yes. so that you are able to... Uh, assist more people than you would be able to do if you are only using two or three doctors. Thank you very much. A champion of the fourth industrial revolution, that is uh, Professor Chilisi Marwala. And look